So I think it goes without saying a why you should be buying a home in the first place instead of renting. However, being that we're in 2020 with the whole coronavirus pandemic going on, we're at the peak of the market supposedly, and there's a bunch of YouTubers making videos claiming that the housing market is gonna be crashing sometime soon. I decided to put together a simple little video on reasons why you should be buying a house in 2020 and not really be paying attention to what's happening on the internet. And if you hang till the end, I'm gonna give you some tips on exactly the type of homes you should be looking for so that you do have that safety net in case there is a correction in the market. So if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Reason number one on why you should be owning a home or purchasing a home in 2020 with everything going on is because the interest rates are at an all time low. Now, what does that actually mean for you as a purchaser? I wanted to give you a specific example of what this actually means and how much money you could be saving by purchasing now instead of waiting until you think that the housing prices might go to a fair price. And to keep it simple, if you look at the historical 30 year fixed mortgage rates over the past 50 years, you're gonna see that we are definitely at an all time low. So I put together an example of what it looks like to buy a home 10 years ago versus what it looks like to buy a home now. Bring this over, this is what it looks like to buy a $300,000 home at 5% down at a 30 year fixed rate of 6%. Now, if you look at the historical mortgage rates, a 6% interest rate was happening in the early 2000s and was pretty consistent 6% right up until the market crashed in 2007. And to keep it consistent, we're keeping the property taxes at 2,500 and the homeowner's insurance at $1,000. And obviously today's rates are a lot lower, 450,000 with the same 5% down payment. 2% interest rate, which I mean, to be realistic, you probably won't get that unless you do a 15 year loan and even that's kind of slim, but it's just an exaggerated example to give you guys an idea of how much money you could save. And you're literally saving money by purchasing a home for $150,000 more. So with that example right there, it goes to prove that waiting for the market to correct itself so that you think you can get a good deal makes absolutely no sense. Now, the second reason why you should be purchasing real estate in 2020 goes to the tax write-off. Now your mortgage is consistent of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and pity for short is what we call it. Now out of the pity, you get to write off, according to the IR and the S, your taxes and your interest on your mortgage, up to 750,000. So to put it purely, if you're gonna be renting money, you're gonna be throwing away all of your money towards rent. There's nothing that you can deduct out of paying a landlord's mortgage. Now if you're gonna be owning a home, no matter the price, you get to deduct the taxes and the interest on that. However, how much are you actually saving by the housing write-offs allowed by the IRS. Well, if we dig a little bit deeper to figure that out, if you take this example right here, it's going to play into a few different factors. And for the sake of this video, we're going to use a standard deduction and you can ignore this 2019 because it's the exact same in 2020. Now you're going to see right here that the value of standard deduction in 24% tax bracket. So what this means is taking a standard deduction, which is this amount right here, it really is going to depend on your tax bracket, depending on your income. And you can see your tax bracket goes up as you start to make more money. Now, that's kind of the only caveat of writing off the interest on your mortgage. The more money you make, the more you get to physically write off. So if in 2020 you pay 12,000 or less, you would take this standard deduction and you would multiply it times your tax bracket and get the actual deduction amount that you can take and you can see that the more you make, the more you actually get to physically write off. Now, on top of that, this is not the only taxable deduction that you can take with the IRS. You can also recapture depreciation. Now, what does that mean? Because real estate is one of the few assets that you can depreciate even though it's an appreciating asset. Well, if you take it simply by definition, a depreciating asset is something that loses value over time. But we both know that owning a home means that you're going to gain value over time as proven over the last 50 years. So the simple way of calculating this is taking an example of a $300,000 single family home and splitting up the land and the building value on your tax assessment. Now, if you're curious what your tax assessment is, you can easily go to your county's tax website, type in your address, and it will show you exactly what your year's tax assessment is. You're going to take the building value only. You're going to divide it by 27 and a half years. This is used across the nation for residential properties. And you're going to multiply whatever this number gives you by the annual marginal tax rate, which is what we just talked about right over here, depending on what tax bracket 
you are in. When you break all these numbers down to keep it simply, it simply means the more money you make, the more money you save on taxes, but also the more money you make, the more money you pay on taxes. This really isn't a huge tax savings in general. However, if you're just working a regular nine to five job, this stuff can really add up and it's a whole lot better than just throwing away your money to rent in the first place. And the third reason, which is probably one of the most common reasons on why people buy real estate in general, but I completely disagree with the reason on why you should be doing it is appreciation over time. Now, first things first, if you're truly wanting to buy real estate, I don't want you to have the mindset of being able to purchase a property, resell it five years later for $100,000 more, because that's not how appreciation works. However, if you do look at the historical charts of appreciation in the housing market in the US, your housing price will go up 2% on average every single year. Now, let's break that down really quick. That doesn't mean that if you purchase a home in 2020, that in 2022, it's gonna go up 4%. This is on average throughout the United States. Although we did see a very sharp price increase in the last two years since 2018, this doesn't mean that it's going to continue going up. As a matter of fact, all of those YouTube videos and gurus saying that the market crash is gonna come, it's not necessarily going to be a crash like 2007. It's probably gonna be more of a natural correction before it continues to go back up. That's the way that the housing market works in general. However, I promised you guys some tips on exactly what homes to look for so that in case there actually is a crash coming, because you never know, you will be bulletproof and have a level of cushion to secure you from any income loss or any loss of housing value in general. Now, this is advice that was taught to me at a young age. It's personally what I do whenever I purchase real estate. But before we do that, don't forget to smash that like button because this information is super valuable. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is pretty straightforward and pretty obvious, but it's to live below your means. So right now in 2020, if you can qualify for a $500,000 mortgage, you should not be looking for a $500,000 mortgage. You should be looking for a $400,000 mortgage and below. And the reason why is because you never know what could happen. And if one person loses their income, you lose your income, someone gets terminal illness, you want to be able to support your mortgage and not have to choose whether to save someone's life or to pay your mortgage. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this topic, but in a nutshell, don't live above your means. The second thing you can think about in case there is some type of correction or you have a job loss or anything like that is you have the ability now that you own a home to rent rooms. Now I understand the concept of a lot of people not wanting to rent rooms because of privacy. However, if you follow the next tip that I'm gonna give you soon, then you will understand that you should be buying a property that can be easily rentable. For example, an easy way to buy a house is to buy a townhouse or a single family home with a basement or some type of private attachment that's separated from your main living space that you could rent out in case something does happen. Now that means that you will have to make some sacrifices on the type of home you want. <laughs> you might not be able to get that fancy new construction that you've always wanted but you have to ask yourself, is that something I really need or is now the time for that? Which leads us to our third tip, which is buying a house below market value. Now, there's only a select few of YouTubers that actually preach this and do it themselves. And many people call it different things. Meet Kevin happens to call it a wedge deal. I happen to just say buying below market value. And if you wanna start making money in real estate instantly, here is Real Estate 101 and how you should be thinking about this. If you're qualifying for a standard three and a half or 5% down payments such as an FHA or a conventional loan, doesn't matter. This is the way you need to be thinking about buying real estate. If you buy a home right smack dab in the middle at market value because it's got upgraded features, stainless steel appliances, gray walls, white cabinets, and it looks fantastic, you are not gonna be able to resell that property for a profit for another five years. And here's exactly why. Because as soon as you purchase a home at market value, the home instantly depreciates from basically the amount of down payment that you put down. So if you think about it, if you go out and buy a house tomorrow for 300,000 and you put 3% down, which is $9,000, you think, oh, I could turn around and sell that house tomorrow and make my $9,000 back. But that's not also the case because when you sell real estate, there's taxes, closing fees, attorney fees, commissions in the way. And it's very rare that you're gonna be able to meet a buyer directly to be able to avoid the majority of those fees in the first place. You're most likely gonna have to live in the house for another five years, which means your down payment is technically useless. However, if you take that market value house and maybe find something slightly below it, maybe with a 10 percent cushion. So say you find that same $300,000 house without the white cabinets, without the gray walls, but say you can find it for 260, something around the 250, 260 range, then you will have a 50 or $40,000 cushion in case the market does correct itself, in case you lose your job and need to rent it. And on top of that, that same 3% or 
$9,000 down payment that you would have made goes straight into the equity of that property. So now you have instantly basically built $50,000 of instant equity on a property which is what most people's salary is whenever they qualify for these types of homes in the first place. Now, I know what you're thinking, Austin, how in the world am I even gonna find these types of deals in the first place? Well, it's actually really easy and I'm planning on making a video the next week. So if you subscribe down below and keep an eye out for that video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to find those types of below market value deals so that you can get that instant equity. It just boils down to a little bit of hard work and learning. And the fourth and final tip that I can give you is to not buy new construction. The same goes when you buy a house at market value. New construction actually depreciates as soon as you buy it. So you can think of yourself buying a step above at market value and you're basically not going to be able to resell that property and break even for another seven to 10 years, which is totally insane. So there you have it. That's all the reasons on why you should be buying a home in 2020 and exactly what type of home you should be looking for. Remember guys, the gray walls and the white cabinets are definitely appealing, but it's not worth getting trapped in a home, especially with these uncertain times on where the market is actually going to go. So my recommendation to you is to buy below market value, build that instant equity and have the opportunity to keep that home, rent it later on or sell it and be able to take out that $50,000 in equity just because you made the right purchase decision. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what type of property you're thinking about buying in 2020 or 2021, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.